Ah, well, I'm going to make a very strong and concerted effort to make a shorter video today. Uh, yeah, in fact, I had a comment not that long ago, somebody saying, you know, that the videos are quite detailed. And yeah, the problem is I'd like to do shorter videos, but kind of the reason I do these videos is to try and fill in some of the gaps that maybe some other people leave. Uh, and that just means they need to be a little bit more detailed and longer. But today's little project is probably something that not many other people are going to want to do. Uh, so I can kind of skim through it pretty quickly and hopefully make a shorter video. If you do require some more details, then uh, we'll just leave a comment or go to the website, get in contact with me via that. And uh, I'll be only too happy to give you some more details. So to assist me in uh, <laughs> making sure that this is small, uh, we're going to put a little clock on it. And uh, we're going to start the clock now. And I intend to have this video finished within 15 minutes. So, uh, yeah, what are we doing? Well, we're building a little power controller for the 3D printer. And uh, I'll go through the details of it now. So what is this project all about? Well, basically, because some of these prints take a long time and I just don't want to sit there watching it, um, I get a little bit nervous leaving it unattended. Sometimes, you know, if it's running all by itself all day or overnight, uh, I don't want to have to worry about it um, going wrong, catching fire and generally causing some problems. So, uh, yeah, that's the main reason. The secondary reason is that once the print's finished, I don't want it just sitting there with the fans running and the lights on because uh, all my lights that are around it are hanging off of it. I just want it to be killed completely um, once the print's done. So uh, what are we going to use to get this done? Well, it's going to be an Arduino controlled device that uh, basically controls power to the printer's two power supplies um, and it can turn them on and off. It will also measure the temperature of various parts of the printer. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it measuring each of the power supplies separately as they're probably the most critical in terms of uh, overheating danger and also measuring the temperature on the ramps board which kind of takes into account the Arduino. Everything else on the electronics is fairly safe but seeing as I have a four spare thermistors hanging around I'm going to add one to the actual top of the printer as well so that's just going to give me the sort of general temperature around the uh, 3D printer itself which might come in handy or once I put an enclosure in. If the temperature at any of these points falls outside of some set limits uh, which I can set individually then it will basically kill the power to the power supplies and the whole thing is completely disconnected from any electricity. Also, uh, when it receives a signal from the ramps board that the print is finished, it will do likewise and kill all the power. So how are we going to do this? Well, uh, when I ordered the thermistor for my heated bed, um, it, it turned up in a pack of five, so I've got four left over, so they're quite handy. Uh, I'm going to use a sort of fairly high power or high current capability AC relay. In fact, the one I'm using uh, can handle 16 amps, which is way more than it's needed. I've measured um, the power going through to both of the um, power supplies and that really doesn't exceed 2 amps. Uh, so the 16 amp one will do perfectly fine. Uh, obviously we'll have a 12 volt DC coil so we can power it via a MOSFET from the Arduino. Uh, I'm also going to stick an OLED on there so that we can see the status whether it's on and off and it can tell us the temperature at the various points of the printer. So of course the next thing I needed to do was uh, draw up a schematic and uh, yeah, try and get that down, make sure I kind of yeah, see that it's going to work and what kind of components are going to be used. I'm going to be used? I'm going to be using. And uh, so quickly, basically I'm going to be using an optocoupler um, from the ramps because uh, when this is running and when it first powers things up, the ramps is obviously off. So uh, it's kind of floating and then there's all sorts of noise as it powers up. So that's going to send some dubious signals. Um, so to keep the two completely separate, galvanically isolated, if you like, <laughs> for the correct terminology, um, there's going to be an optocoupler that uh, will basically be driven high by the ramps when it receives uh, an M81 command. Um, which will then, through the optocoupler, connect 5 volts to one of the digital pins. There will obviously be a momentary switch um, and it will be uh, have a pull-down resistor on it 
as will the uh, ramps signal pin. So normally they'll be pulled to ground and uh, the switch as well as the ramp signal, obviously when they're active will go high. So it'll be looking for high signals on those digital pins on the Arduino. Then connected to pin four of the Arduino is an output which essentially just drives the gate of a MOSFET. And uh, it's a logic level MOSFET. So when it sees five volts compared to the reference ground, it will connect the source to the drain, the source being the 12 volt ground. As the um, relay already has 12 volts supplied to one side of the coil, it will then have a completed circuit and uh, it will close the relay, which is normally open. And as you can see, all of the AC mains go through that single uh, relay switch and uh, will then power up the printer. Also connected obviously is a display. It's going to be a simple uh, I squared C OLED that uh, will show us what the temperatures are and uh, what the status is. And obviously if something overheats, it will uh, tell us so as well as shutting down the printer. So the only other part of the schematic really is the four thermistors which each of which goes through a um, voltage divider to give, an, give us a, uh, a known reference so that we can uh, figure out what the resistance is of the thermistors. Therefore, using the lookup tables, we can work out what the temperature at each of those points is. So then obviously I needed some uh, code for the Arduino to do its thing. And uh, to be honest with you, there were some complications along the way which means that had I started from scratch knowing these complications, I would have done it in a completely different way. So it probably isn't the cleanest code in the world, but it works. And uh, as it's really for my uh, personal use, I have no desire to spend more time cleaning up the code and streamlining it. Um, I will make the code available on the uh, website, the link of which will be in the description below. So if you want to take a look at it and have a laugh at it or maybe use it in something uh, along the same lines that you might want to do, then please feel free to do that. The code is fairly heavily commented so that uh, you'll be able to read through it and see what's going on and what each of the values do. Um, and yeah, you should be able to work it out from there. Some of the eagle eyed amongst you will notice that I'm not using the Arduino IDE. Um, it is pretty you know, it's okay, but it's really limited as an actual editor, um, especially if you're used to coding in, um, you know, more sophisticated editors, if you like. Um, I use on a daily basis Sublime Text, and uh, thankfully somebody created an amazing Arduino plugin for Sublime Text, which I will link to in uh, on the website. It is a very good tool, and uh, it provides all the advantages of using uh, a proper editor, uh, such as Sublime Text, uh, whilst being able to use Arduino and uh, being able to compile and upload directly from within Sublime Text. So with this in hand, I uh, basically threw it all together on uh, some little breadboards, some little modular breadboards I have, which are quite handy because you can leave certain components like the LCD and a couple of buttons in place and just plug them in like a module. So these are all the components being tested and just for the irony of it, these breadboards are sitting on an actual breadboard. So as everything was working on the breadboards, uh, I went ahead and uh, started designing the, the final board. Um, I really couldn't be bothered printing a PCB for this, so it's just going to be on strip board. And although I really don't like it that much as it has a few shortcomings, uh, fritzing probably is the best for simply throwing a strip board together. The only slight issue is that here we are putting them in the wrong side, so it is exactly the wrong way around. <laughs> the way I get around this is by going in and turning off all the layers, then going in and turning on just the breadboard layer, uh, then basically with my clipping tool or my screenshot tool or whatever you like is selecting all of that loading it into a simple graphics package. Here I'm using EarFan view, pasting it in, uh, and then flipping it horizontally so that I get the mirror, which is exactly how I need to do it in reality, so that the components go in from the other side and the traces are broken in the right place. So I used that to cut out a real piece of strip board and remove the traces where they're not needed. 
Uh, in fact, I extended some of these cuts all the way to the edge over and above what I designed in Frixing just because, uh, well, they're not needed at all and uh, it's just safer to not have the strip, <laughs> to not have copper there that you don't need. I then went ahead and soldered in all of the components in the places as designed in the Fritzing schematic. As I'll be using a Pro Mini for this project, um, they do not have a USB serial chip on board, therefore I'm having to use a CH340 so that I can connect it via USB to the computer. As you can see right now it is running a standard Blink program, uh, but we are now going to flash it with our new firmware which is currently being compiled. And there it is, it is all compiled and ready to go. So now that the Arduino is all loaded up with its code, uh, it is a matter of making a number of soldering connections to it. And before anybody asks, yes I do suffer from a benign tremors which makes <laughs> doing these very small solder joints quite entertaining. I've then made all the solder joints to the relay and just to make sure that they've got uh, enough strength as they're pretty weak quite often the little terminals on these relays I'm going to lob a load of hot glue in there just to give them a bit of strength. I'm then going to cover the whole thing with a large piece of heat shrink to uh, yeah, make sure that it's all uh, secure, safe from prying little fingers and basically make sure that it's as well sealed all round as I possibly can. So here are all the components ready for assembly. So we've got basically everything we need here and uh, I found a nice little uh, metal push button, a momentary button that we're going to be using for turning it on and off and uh, everything else is ready to rock. So all that's missing is something to house it all in and uh, I've printed out this massive 3D part uh, which will not only hold the electronics here and the screen and the button but also is uh, part of the enclosure for all the rest of the electronics. So there's a question of mounting the components in the allotted spaces and uh, so there is the Arduino going in and there is my little strip board circuit board with all the rest of the components going in and of course mounting our fancy little button and popping the LCD in its hole so that we can see it through a little window on the other side. Next up it was time to mount the relay and I'm going to mount it directly inside the uh, socket box and then I just needed to connect it into the plug face. And that's it all put back together and ready to go at this end and also at the other end where everything is connected, the thermistor is all hooked up, the DC power is plugged in and the cable that sends the signal from the ramps all plumbed in. So it's time to fire up and test it and of course I managed to get a green LED light on my button just to keep in with the green theme. So to power the printer on we just need to hold the button in for two seconds and uh, it will power everything up and we'll start cycling through each thermistor displaying its current temperature on the LCD. And when it comes time to turn it off, it's a simple press of the button again and uh, it powers everything down, disconnecting power entirely from the 3D printer. Just to test the functionality of being powered down via G-code instructions, I've powered it back up again. And then in Octoprint, I can go into the terminal to simulate or send some direct G-code instructions so we stick in here the M81 command, send it to the printer, and uh, there it goes, it shuts down. So everything seems to be working just fine. And stop the clock. Well, so 12 minutes 50, which means taking account for some of the mumbling at the beginning and some of this mumbling at the end, it means I've got about a minute and a half to just sit here and, uh, well, sit, stand, stand and say nothing. So. Nah, I won't do that to you. See you next time.